Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Sustainability Shorts, our series of interviews with leaders driving forward decarbonization. Today, we're speaking with L'Oreal Group's Chief Operations Officer for North America, Carlos Ruiz. We are so pleased to have you with us here today, Carlos. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, Angela, for having me. So let's just kick it off. Tell us a little bit about your role and what areas fall under operations at L'Oreal. How did you get into this work? Well, my role as Chief Operations Officer for North America uh, for L'Oreal, uh, really it goes end to end for the whole journey of our product from sourcing our raw materials all the way to the distribution. Uh, my team is committed uh, to sustainability and innovation to really enhance the efficiency of our supply chain through digitalization and automation. And of course, we are focusing a lot on sustainability and uh, our energies, uh, really making sure that we reduce our ca carbon emission. Tell us a little bit more about the key drivers behind your sustainability roadmap. You know, how are you and the operations team prioritizing the work that you do every day? Well, uh, for L'Oreal, sustainability has been a central point of attention since uh, 2013, uh, even before that. But in operations, we have three major focus that we have and we work every day. The first one is our tool spot. That is a sustainability product optimization tool. That is really the analysis of 14 different dimensions of our product in the entire life cycle. Since the raw materials that we use in the formula, the packaging materials that we use, and also the use of the product at the consumer point of view, and also the recyclability. So for us, we analyze every product on those 14 dimensions to make sure that we make the right decisions and we enable our partners, our suppliers, and our consumers as well, to make sure that we make the right decision in terms of sustainability with every product that we have. The second part is the efficiency, efficiency in our manufacturing sites. Uh, and the optimization and elimination of any other waste that it's uh, involved as part of the manufacturing system. So that's another very important, important point. As well, we're very committed to use renewable energy in our manufacturing and operations sites. And uh, by, by 2030, we are committed to have everyone at, at 100%, actually by 2025. And our sites in North America, we are already there. And our next step is to reduce the water that is used in our processes, not necessarily the water that is part of our formula of the products, but the, the water that we use in our plants. And the third big piece after spot and efficiency in manufacturing is the uh, sustainable transportation. Uh, we are very committed to continue working on transportation because as you know, the greenhouse emissions uh, is, is really a big problem that we have in climate change. And our co commitment is to reduce by 50% in 2030 our greenhouse emission generation because the due to the transportation of our finished products with the baseline that we use uh, in 2016. So those are the three major focus on the operations team uh, in terms of sustainability. I love that. And picking up on your um, point on transportation, you know, I know collaboration is so key to everything you do. How are you working with those transportation suppliers to achieve those goals? Can you tell us a little bit more? I think folks would be really interested to hear. Yes, sure. It's a, uh, in L'Oreal, we have decided that, of course, uh, the business is important, but we assess our transportation uh, partners in different ways, not only because efficiency or cost, but also because their environmental and social policies and commitments. We have five big pillars that we follow when we focus on our transportation system. The first one is uh, the performance management. Uh, we focus on making sure that what we have today, it works in the best way. So we have a transportation management system that provides us a lot of detailed information uh, regardless, uh, regard, in regards of different things, not only cost efficiency, but also the CO2 emissions uh, on the decisions that we make. So imagine today or in the past, a lot of people made decisions based on economy, on, on having a budget uh, in terms of cost. But today, our teams have the opportunity to make decisions also based on the CO2 mm -hmm. usage. So, for example, uh, we have a CO2 budget and the teams make educated decisions to ensure that we are having a positive impact in the CO2 emissions. The second one 
It's the greener lanes uh, programs. Uh, what is this? In the long transportation routes and process that we have, we're making sure that we have different solutions in terms of uh, intermodal solutions that provide us with different means, means of transportation, but also with different levels of, or use of energies. Another one that is very important for us, the air freight. Uh, air freight has a big impact uh, on the CO2 emissions and the, the greenhouse emissions. And we, wa we really want to make sure that we avoid and minimize any use of air freight. In L'Oreal, we, we use less than 1% of our transportation in air freight, but we focus and we have a big process to escalate and minimize the use of air freight uh, only for business imperative decisions. And, and we are involved uh, at my level and the, and the presidents of the divisions to make the decisions on air freight. The next one is the green mile, uh, green last mile pro uh, program that we have. It's the, the use of different transportation and the, uh, in the, in the uh, urban areas to make sure that our products get to the consumers in the best way and, and use like uh, bikes and, and uh, electric vehicles. It's something that we're really focusing as well. And last but not least is the, the involvement in the ecosystem. It's making sure that everybody understands the impact starting with our suppliers, but also providing information to the consumers to make sure that they make the right decisions and then everybody's part of this solution. Yeah, I, I love that example, Carlos, because I think it just so clearly shows that collaboration is, is at the heart of your work. Can you tell us a little bit more about some other focus areas for L'Oreal as you're driving down your carbon footprint? Definitely. It's a, we not only work on transforming and innovation and for ourselves. We're really looking for and seek for partnerships and collaboration uh, to empower our entire ecosystem to make sure that we make the right decisions and have a positive impact for our planet. Uh, as you may know, uh, L'Oreal has uh, an early partnership with CDP uh, in the fight uh, to reduce the greenhouse emissions. Uh, and we're focusing in two big areas. The first one is uh, with our suppliers, uh, where we are asking them to to commit and to reduce their direct emissions, that means the scope one and the scope two, by 50% compared to 2016. At the same time, the other side of our ecosystem, we are enabling our consumers to reduce the product use emissions by 25% uh, compared to 2016. I think this is uh, involved, the involvement of our suppliers, ourselves committed, but also uh, our consumers. On the other side, it's uh, with our strategic suppliers, we are really making uh, a lot of progress. And by the way, all this has been uh, awarded by CDP and recognized by CDP, giving us for eight consecutive years a triple A rating. And we are the only company that has achieved that, and we're very proud and very committed to continue focusing on this. On the other side, uh, these, these goals require also a lot of collaboration and uh, we're working with our suppliers on that. Uh, a good example of that is the platinum medal that we got uh, from Ecobatis. And uh, that is showing that we are here uh, in the top 1% of companies when we were assessed on the environmental efforts, ethics, uh, social and human rights, and responsible sourcing. So as I mentioned, is involving the suppliers, committing to the suppliers, and committing to our environment and our partners and our consumers, and also enable our consumers to make the right decisions for the environment. So that's uh, really how we see the impact of the entire ecosystem. Well, I love that. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're making the economics work in this environment? So I think that's so critical to the answer. Definitely. Uh, I think it's a... There is no more question because there is no space for the question of uh, we want to focus on environmental uh, or do we want to focus on economics. We have to work on both and it's possible. Uh, I'm just thinking when, when you improve our processes or when you improve the processes, uh, I would say in sourcing, uh, in transportation and manufacturing, you need to focus really on lean organizations that are really focused on reduction of waste. And the waste uh, is coming uh, probably, as, as I mentioned, water, energy, and materials that at some point needs to be uh, destroyed. And that, it has an, uh, that has a big impact, not only on the environment, but also uh, on the performance of the organization. So 
for me, the better process that you have, the more efficient processes that you have, even from planning, making sure that you plan the right product at the right time so you really optimize the use of resources in manufacturing, the use of resources in transportation and di distribution have a positive impact on the environment, but also have a positive impact in the economic of organization. I love that example, Carlos. So I feel like almost I want to, to issue, for you to issue a little bit of a challenge to your colleagues. You know, what are the kind of best practices like that that you would like to see more of? Well, I think a lot of uh, people in different industries and, and talking to many colleagues, we are all trying to share best practices. And, and a lot of the things that I share with you, of course, are all definitely happening also in other industries at different level uh, and with different commitments, but uh, things are happening. Things that I am very proud and are also have an, a big impact in the, on, on the people is uh, some program that we have with our sourcing team. For example, the inclusive sourcing uh, program that we have. Uh, 85,000 people around the world have has had a positive impact of this inclusive sourcing effort that we have. That is really not just a result of, of luck of random. Is We are really focusing to make sure that we have access and give access to our sources, sourcing policies and efforts to provide uh, support to some communities that really require that. Another one is the, the fair wage initiatives. Initiatives uh, In 2020, we commit and we pledge to provide our employees with a fair wage, uh, and it's happening, and we're asking and, and, and including uh, our suppliers on this effort, and we are asking them to pledge by 2030. A great tips. I'm very excited for you to share all those insights with the folks who are going to be watching this. And so thank you so much for this wonderful session, Carlos. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to share. And uh, we are committed. And thank you very much for, for inviting me. We are so delighted to have L'Oreal Group partnering with us at Climate Week NYC 2024. Thanks to our watchers for joining us today. Thank you. And make sure to stay tuned for more content as we lead up to the biggest climate week in the world this September. Thanks so much.